Caroline, today we're going to talk about the azapd trial. Can you tell us why is azathioprine an important potential therapy in Parkinson's? Um, well, azathioprine is a drug that suppresses the uh, immune system. So this would represent an entirely new strategy for treating Parkinson's disease. Our theory is that in Parkinson's, cell death in the brain and the release of toxic proteins from these cells leads to activation of the immune system. And this immune activation then drives further cell damage and death in a sort of vicious cycle. So what we hope is that if we can suppress the immune response and break that vicious cycle, we can uh, slow down cell death and we can slow down disease progression in patients. And if we could do this, it would represent a really important advance in Parkinson's because at the moment all, of the, tre all the treatments that we have are what's called symptomatic therapies. So they act by um, boosting dopamine levels, which improves symptoms of the disease, but doesn't do anything in terms of slowing the underlying d uh, disease process in the brain. Great. And can you tell us about the aim of the ACPD trial? Sure. Well, it's a, a trial that's um, going to involve 60 participants. Uh, half of those participants will be selected at random to receive azathioprine, and half of them will receive placebo or a dummy drug. And what we hope to be able to show is that uh, azathioprine leads to a slowed rate of disease progression in the group uh, that, that receive that drug. Um, it's really a sort of proof of concept trial. So what we want to do is, is demonstrate that suppressing uh, the immune system in the periphery can have an effect on inflammation in the brain and, and on subsequent disease progression. So in order to try and measure that, what we'll do is look at various clinical measures of how the disease is, 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 is um, progressing, but also we'll be taking blood samples and we'll be taking cerebrospinal fluid samples and we'll be doing PET imaging of the brain. So we'll be able to look at immune markers in the blood, immune markers in the sp spinal fluid, immune markers uh, and inflammation within the brain as well. Can you tell us how encouraging is research into inflammation and the immune system for Parkinson's? Um, well, there's been a lot of developments actually in this area over the past five, five or ten years and the evidence that the immune system is involved in driving Parkinson's is, is quite strong now. So there's certainly a lot of evidence uh, from studies in the laboratory. So if we look at uh, models of Parkinson's disease in the lab, and in these in models, if we alter certain components of the immune system, we can see that that has a knock-on beneficial effect in terms of survival of dopaminergic cells. Um, but there's also really encouraging evidence coming out of studies in, in patients. So, for example, genetic studies have provided some really strong evidence supporting that this idea that the immune system is really critical in Parkinson's. So, for example, um, if you have, mut have mutations in, in critical genes that uh, control immune function, then this leads to an alteration in your risk of getting Parkinson's disease in the first place. Um, we've also been looking at studies, uh, studies where we've taken blood samples from large groups of patients, and we've looked at the, uh, the profile of immune markers in the blood um, close to the time of diagnosis, and we find that those individuals who have a more inflammatory profile of markers in their blood tend to do worse over time in terms of their motor function and in terms of their memory and thinking. And then also, uh, very recently, there's been some, uh, some good evidence published to suggest that individuals who take immunosuppressive drugs for other conditions seem to have a reduced risk of developing Parkinson's disease. So these are big sort of epidemiological population studies where you take um, thousands and thousands of people who are on immunosuppressive drugs, follow them over time, and look at their risk of Parkinson's disease, and you look at um, uh, how that risk compares to the risk of Parkinson's in the population as a whole. Um, so that's really uh, supported uh, this idea that moving forward to a clinical trial of immunosuppressants in PD is a good idea. And do you think that azathioprine could be developed as a new treatment for Parkinson's, given that it's such an old drug? Well, the fact that it's an old drug is actually quite helpful to us because it means that we know exactly how to use it. We know what sort of dose we should be using in patients. Uh, we know how many times a day they have to take it. We know about the sort of side effects we're going to expect. Uh, and we know how to monitor for those side effects. So that means that we can very rapidly reposition azathioprine uh, for, for, for use in a clinical trial in Parkinson's disease. So I think it's actually very helpful that, that it's an old drug. Um, we, we don't know whether um, this will necessarily lead to us introducing azathioprine as a therapy for Parkinson's disease in the long term, but what it will do is um, give us information about, sort of, as I said earlier, proof of concept 
So is it a good idea to suppress the peripheral immune system? Does that have beneficial effects in Parkinson's? If we find evidence that that's the case, then it will mean that we can look at immunosuppressants as a class of drugs more carefully, and then we can think about which immunosuppressant drug might be the very best one to take forward in a larger trial. So can you tell us who would be your ideal trial participant for the ACPD trial? Uh, yeah, so we've got quite strict inclusion and exclusion criteria for this trial, as is the case for, for most clinical trials. Um, for this particular trial, we want to recruit patients within the early stage of their disease, so within the first three years from diagnosis, um, because we want to treat them before too much cell damage has occurred, and we want to try and break that vicious cycle that I spoke about earlier of immune activation leading to cell damage. Um, we also are planning to uh, recruit individuals who have uh, signs that suggest that they, are, they will progress more rapidly over the course of time. Um, and the reason for doing that is that we want to select individuals who have the most to gain from this. And by choosing those individuals in whom the disease is likely to progress a bit more rapidly, it also gives us a greater chance of being able to demonstrate a, a statistically significant effect, which will then allow us to move forward in, into, um, into um, larger trials in, in bigger numbers of patients. And then finally, we've got to think about uh, safety issues. So we wouldn't, for example, want to treat a patient with azathioprine if they're already on another immunosuppressive therapy. And we wouldn't want to include patients in this trial who we know have any other inflammatory or immune problems. Um, and can, can you tell us when do you hope to report on this trial? Um, so if all goes well, we're hoping to recruit our first patient by the end of this month. And then we should report on the trial in three years, so early 2023. Thank you.